It's a pleasure having you back for this edition of your weekly program. The African Union Journal brings to you updates on the actions of the African Union. Africa is hit hard by the negative effects of the war between Russia and Ukraine. Reduced supplies of cereals and agricultural inputs have aggravated the food crisis, which now affects 346 million Africans. However, Russia and Ukraine agree on the significant role Africa plays in world politics and plead for a reform of the United Nations Organization in favor of a greater representation of Africa in decision-making centers. More in this report. The disruption of supply systems and food inflation are affecting Africa, a continent on which the war between Russia and Ukraine has aggravated the food crisis which today affects 346 million Africans. Going against the grain of other partners, the African Union called for the lifting of sanctions against Russia to restore the supply of agricultural inputs and cereals. Now the sanctions that have been imposed on Russia are going to have and are having an overarching impact. Even those countries that are either bystanders or not part of the conflict are also going to suffer from the sanctions that have been imposed against Russia. In the middle of the Russian-Ukrainian conflict, Africa arouses the interests of both warning parties, a paradox in a context with particularly heavy consequences on the global economic and political balance. During his address to the African Union on the 20th of June 2022, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky recalled the long-standing relationship between Africa and his country in the education system in particular. The Eastern European leader announced a strengthening of political ties with the African continent with an emphasis on inter-parliamentary exchanges. Використовувати наші ресурси і нашу землю. І наше завдання номер один зараз нарешті позбутися загрози голоду. Russia is linked to several African countries like the Central African Republic by military agreements. However, the country is expanding its economic relations with Africa. In the first quarter of 2022, economic cooperation between Russia and Africa increased to more than 34%. Fruitful relations that Russia wishes to perpetuate. Uh, summit Russia Africa. Et je tiens aussi à rappeler qu'en 2019, il y a eu un sommet Russie-Afrique qui s'est tenu ici même à Sochi. Мы на новом этапе развития придаем очень большое значение нашим отношениям с африканскими странами. On peut dire que nous sommes dans une nouvelle étape du développement de nos relations et nous apportons une attention très particulière, une importance particulière au développement de nos relations. Il doit dire que cela a des определенные résultats positifs. Despite the conflict between them, Russia and Ukraine agree on the fact that Africa occupies more and more space on the world political chessboard. These two countries recognize that efforts are needed to make Africa's voice more international. It is in this dynamic that President Volodymyr Zelensky promised to hold a world conference on the reform and transformation of the United Nations in Ukraine at the end of the war. The conflict between Russia and Ukraine has consequences on the African continent. The two Eastern European states' major producers of grains, such as wheat, on which Africa depends heavily, have, due to hostilities that have lasted for months, created a shortage that is affecting many African countries. In an attempt to find solutions, Senegalese President Macky Sall, equally chairperson of the African Union, advocates the release of stocks of cereals and fertilizers. Let's follow this report. Several African countries import wheat from Russia and Ukraine to feed their population. Ukraine, which is at war, has been forced to stop exporting wheat to Russia, which is conditioning its export. As a result, green prices are soaring, hurting an African economy that is heavily dependent on wheat from Eastern Europe. Même s'ils sont éloignés du théâtre, sont des victimes 
les victimes de, de cette crise au plan économique. Since the beginning of the Russian military operation in Ukraine, a ton of wheat has been trading at nearly $300 on the world markets. This is the highest level since 2011, the years of political upheaval in Arab countries. In Africa, many countries import tons of wheat from Europe every year. Soft wheat used mainly to make bread and durum wheat, the basis of the composition of pasta in particular. But the les sanctions also contre la, la Russie ont entraîné plus de gravité puisque nous n'avons plus accès aux, aux céréales venant de Russie, euh, au blé en particulier, mais surtout aux, aux engrais, aux engrais et à l'urée en particulier, pendant que notre agriculture est déjà déficitaire. Et ça, ça crée vraiment de sérieuses menaces sur la sécurité alimentaire du continent. More than 4.5 million tons of wheat were imported into Morocco in 2021. 36% of this came from Russia. The crisis has forced the authorities to source grain from other countries. According to the Moroccan government, grain could be easily imported from the European Union and any other region. Il faut que nous travaillions ensemble sur les deux régions pour que tout ce qui concerne déjà le volet alimentaire, céréales, engrais, soit vraiment hors de sanction. Mais il faut aussi, en même temps, si nous voulons nous, nous aider, Monsieur le Président, que euh, ces sanctions soient levées. While waiting for a return to normalcy, initiatives are multiplying on the continent. In Cameroon, for example, alternatives to wheat are becoming more and more visible. Bread, cookies, and other pastries are now made from local grown and accessible cassava and potatoes flour. In the Maghreb, consumer associations, including the Moroccan Federation of Consumer Associations and the Moroccan Federation of Consumer Rights, have organized movements to ask the government to take responsibility for rising prices. On June 13 and 14, 2022, the International Monetary Fund's Africa Training Institute and the Department of the Economic Development, Trade, Tourism, Industry and Minerals of the African Union Commission organized a high-level conference in Gaborone, Botswana on the promotion of good governance and the fight against corruption within the context of the COVID-19 pandemic and multiple crises. The conference helped to build consensus about good governance as a critical enabler for macroeconomic stability in Africa. Experts highlighted that poor governance and corruption impose a burden on the government budget due to continuous and elevated public expenditure on programs that fail to deliver the expected outcomes. Details in this report. Promoting good governance and fighting corruption in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic and multiple crises was the focus of the high-level conference organized by the International Monetary Fund's Africa Training Institute and the Department of Economic Development, Trade, Tourism, Industry and Minerals of the African Union Commission held on June 13 and 14, 2022 in Gaboron, Botswana. The conference helped to build consensus about good governance as a key factor for the macroeconomic stability in Africa. I believe good governance at the minimum should entail a clear definition of objectives and deliverables, an appropriate leadership, operational and oversight structure for the purpose, accountability frameworks for performance and remedial measures where objectives are not met. According to the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa's 2016 Africa Governance Report, corruption is indeed one of the main obstacles to structural transformation in Africa, a practice that hinders the continent's development as it leads to the depletion of resources, the creation of imbalances in the development process, low economic growth and the failure of development efforts. Weak governance and corruption not only constrain service delivery, and therefore economic activity, but generally raises costs. This affects the government budget, given the continuous allocation of resources to, for example, government projects and utility providers 
that do not generate the requested outcomes nor returns. While the dynamic nature of corruption makes it difficult to pinpoint, this should in no way lead to the underestimation of the gravity of the socio-economic destruction that this scourge causes. According to the International Monetary Fund, the meeting was an opportunity to examine the reforms implemented that have made it possible to make progress in the fight against corruption and to improve the management of public funds. We set out four, a few parameters in that connection. First, countries receiving IMF emergency financing must commit to transparency and accountability safeguards. This included publishing COVID-19 related procurement contracts, including beneficial ownership of companies, conducting and publishing audits, and detailed reporting on COVID uh, spending. In cases of severe governance weaknesses, we worked with authorities to ensure remedies would be taken. Corruption, the cancer of economies, is a growing concern on the continent. The 30th African Union Summit held from January 22 to 29, 2018, already focused on the theme of a common corruption, a sustainable option for Africa's transformation. On the menu of a news and brief for this edition of the African Union Journal, the African Union Commission organized a workshop on women in the blue economy under the theme Unleashing Africa's Greatest Assets in a Hybrid Format. The African Union Commission, through its Department of Agriculture, Rural Development, Blue Economy and Environmental Sustainability, organized a workshop on women in the blue economy under the theme Unleashing Africa's Greatest Assets from 16 to 17 June 2022. The meeting, which brought together a range of leading and inspiring multisectoral stakeholders, aimed to explore opportunities and partnership and identify tangible areas of intervention with concrete results to encourage women's participation in the blue economy provide a platform for African women to define their priorities to ensure that they are streamlined into international programs, funding modalities and positions on the blue economy, support the inventory of data and statistics on professional women in all marine related activities and promote women in ocean and water sciences on the occasion of the United Nations Decade of Ocean Sciences for Sustainable Development. And the African Union celebrated June 16 as the International Day of the African Child. On this occasion, the Pan-African institution strongly condemned all forms of violence against children in conflict situations. On the African continent, armed conflict has claimed the lives of millions of children, either as forced participants or as victims. Millions of children are physically maimed, sexually abused and psychologically traumatized, while others are simply abducted. In addition, conflict also exacerbates social inequalities, exposing children to harmful practices. In response to this situation, the African Union on the African Child's Day condemned all violations against children in conflict situations. The Pan-African Institution further encouraged its member states to take systematic and targeted measures to protect children from violations of their rights in conflict situations, including violations caused by harmful practices. The 2022 edition was celebrated under the theme Eliminating Harmful Practices Affecting Children, Progress on Policies and Practices Since 2013. And finally, the African Union Commission and its partners organized from June 14 to 15, 2022, a virtual training on the security sector oversight mechanisms. The African Union Commission and the African Union Economic, Social and Cultural Council, in partnership with the African Security Sector Network and the African Police Forum, organized from June 14 to 15 a virtual training on the African Union Policy Framework on Security Sector Reform adopted in 2013, including Security Sector Oversight Mechanism in line with the African Union Security Sector Reform Policy Framework and the role of the African Union Commission and the African Union Economic, Social and Cultural Council in influencing the monitoring national security sector reform strategies in line with the Livingston formula and the debate on the role of the Pan-African Parliament in security sector oversight at regional and national levels. The training targeted senior officials and civil society organizations representing member states and regional economic communities. During his tenure of office,
the fourth biannual coordination meeting of the African Union Regional Economic Communities and Regional Mechanisms will be held from the 14th to the 17th of June 2022 at the Mulungushi International Conference Center in Lusaka, the capital of Zambia. This high-level meeting will bring together 13 African heads of state and government, including five heads of state who form the Bureau of the Assembly of the African Union and eight heads of state who chair the eight regional economic communities recognized by the African Union. It will be preceded by the 41st Ordinary Session of the Executive Council of the African Union, which will take place from the 14th to the 15th of July 2022. The member states of the African Union will celebrate the International African Women's Day on the 31st of July 2022. This day aims to affirm the role of women's organizations for the political freedom of Africa and to promote the economic and social status of women on the continent. This Pan-African Women's Day will be celebrated and observed in all African Union member states capital with national programs and various activities. The Extraordinary Summit of African Heads of State on Industrialization and Economic Diversification of Africa will be held from the 20th to the 25th of November 2022 in Niamey, Niger. According to the African Union, the summit aims to underline Africa's renewed determination and commitment to industrialization as one of the central pillars for achieving the continent's economic growth and development objectives. Nados Bekele Thomas is the first woman to lead the African Union Development Agency. Her appointment as a new Chief Executive Officer of the African Union Development Agency, AUDA NEPAD, was endorsed by the African Union Heads of State and Government during the 35th Ordinary Session of the African Union held in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia in February 2022. More about Nados Bekele Thomas in this report. The Ethiopian Nados Bekele Thomas is the first woman to head the African Union's Development Agency. Elected to this position in February 2022, the economist by trading has influenced growth and development on the African continent for almost 40 years. We are in a period of business unusual and development interventions must go beyond poverty management. We must rethink the varying and unending 60 plus years of developmental approaches. These approaches are yet to fully bring about transformational systems that will provide impactful and lasting solutions to Africa's development challenges. The 60-year-old Nados Mbekele Thomas has pledged to support the efforts of the African Union Development Agency to ensure progress on the continent. According to her, the Africa Dialogue Series is a platform for knowledge incubation and exchange and is in line with the main theme of the 31st Ordinary Session of the African Union Assembly on Building Resilience in Nutrition and Food Security on the African Continent. As CEO of Auda Nepad, it is my firm belief ADS must serve as a platform for seasoned and experienced developmental practitioners who will freely exchange and incubate new paradigms and thought processes within the context of the future of development cooperation in Africa and for Africa. While Africa is still suffering the socio-economic repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic, the current conflict between Russia and Ukraine is not only putting a strain on the global economy, but also on the African continent. According to Nados Bekele Thomas, there is an urgent need to build resilient and inclusive food systems. There is an urgent need for an African Union-led initiative to support member states respond to this looming food and nutrition insecurity in Africa. Whilst we also embrace the UN Food System Summit momentum, Auda Nepad places emphasis on the urgent need for policy and investment choices that will transform local capacities and build resilient and inclusive food systems. Nados Bekele Thomas holds a master's degree in economic development, monetary economics and econometrics from New York University and is recognized for her role in reforming Kenya's constitution, the infrastructure of peace. 
Her work in preventive peace building and conflict resolution has earned her acclaim and awards from numerous institutions. The infrastructure of peace. Her work in preventive peace building and conflict resolution has earned her acclaim and awards from numerous institutions. And that was it for this edition of the African Union Journal. We have more news coming up on Africa 24. Stay tuned.